This is the new Adventurer 4 3D printer from Flashforge. It also happens to be a fully enclosed unit which requires no assembly, and you can have up and running in about 10 minutes. And even its filament is stored inside of its own little container in the side of the machine. So that all sounds really good, but is the machine any good and do I think you should get one? Well, let's find out. So right off the bat, I want to let you know that Flash Forge sent this out to me free of charge, and all they wanted in return was a video and feedback about their machine. So I'll be just giving my honest thoughts about the machine, and what I like, what I don't like, and that's about it. So my first impression of this machine is it's actually pretty big compared to the other ones that have the same print volume as it but this is due to it being fully enclosed. So since we're on the topic of build volume, it is a 220 by 200 by 250 millimeter build volume. Honestly, this is a pretty normal size, so there's not much to complain about there. One kind of cool thing that this printer comes with is a magnetic build plate. So you can just pop it off, flex it, pop your pieces off, and put it back on relatively easily. Setup for this machine is as easy as plugging it in, turning it on, and loading in your desired filament. This one came with a one kilogram PLA spool, so I'm going to be using that. On the touchscreen of the printer, you can actually control how you want to load or unload your filament. I'm just gonna do it manually. This will heat up your nozzle, and this actually heated up in about 44 seconds. I just sped up the clip. But once it's all heated up, I'm just going to push load and it will start feeding the filament through. After about a minute or two, it should start coming out the nozzle end. Once it does, you can stop it and remove the filament. And the last thing you need to do is level the bed. And you basically do this guided by the software and a piece of paper, just moving it up so you can fit your paper underneath and slowly lowering it down until it becomes snug, but you can still pull it out. And then you will have to do this to all nine points. So they advertise this as an auto leveling platform, which it technically is because there are no adjustment points that you manually move and it's all computer controlled, but it doesn't automatically set it up. And there are other things on the market that can do that. So that's one thing I am not very happy about, but once you set it, you pretty much are good to go. Unless you move the printer, because I have moved it around a bit and it will become out of level. So you have to level it every time you move it. So to use the printer, you're going to need a computer and you'll need a slicer program. There are two options on their website, which is their proprietary software. And then there is Simplify 3D, which is a paid program. They also told me that you can use Cura, but I haven't tried it. So I'm just going to be using their bare bones flash print. As for the print itself, I'm going to be printing this little Benchy boat, and you'll notice that it has some little fine bits here and there. This is a really good test model to see what your printer is capable of and what it's not. You can also use this model to fine tune your machine's settings so your prints come out perfect every time. It's going to take about an hour and a half to print this, and I'm using just the default settings from the slicer, minus having a raft underneath this. I'm just going to export the file to a flash drive, but you can connect this via an ethernet cable or even through Wi-Fi or other services. To actually start the print, I'm just going to go to the build section, select my model, which it's really nice that you can actually see all of them and just push build. Oh, and just as a side note, if you're looking for any of the files that I'm gonna be using in this video, I'll have links to all of them in the description below. And there we go. The Benchy looks like it printed out pretty good for having all just stock settings. It's a little bit wispy, but let's get it off the build plate. So here's a closer look, and it looks like a little bit of filament got stuck to the side, but it's easy enough to just break off. Other than that, it just has a little bit of stringy wispiness to it all that can be fixed with a little bit more tuning. Or even a quick pass with a heat gun will get rid of almost all of that. If you are printing one of these, it is designed to be printed with no supports, so it can test out the full range of your printer. So once you get that done and your printing is to your liking, the sky is really the limit on what you can actually make. So for instance, I made a heart-shaped ring box so you can easily ship your rings or your jewelry in custom-made boxes. There's even companies now that will sell parts kits so you can make their product, if you have a 3D printer, for a lot cheaper than you would if you would have bought their product originally. You can even customize and organize your tools better using just printed parts. I'm personally a big fan of storage containers and functional parts. So that's one of the things I make a lot of, like these little boxes that kind of just clip together. And if you're able to do any type of 3D work on your own, you can design whatever you want or whatever you need. 
but I know a lot of people don't have the time or the want to learn a new skill like 3D modeling, and that's where Thingiverse comes in. This is a place where people upload 3D files and allow others to download and print them to their heart's content. And there's an absolute ton of things on here, and that's where I got some of the prints for this video. So if you're looking for decorations, or if you're looking for functional things, you can probably find something to fit your needs here. I did a quick search on jewelry displays, and this is what came up. So you can literally just print these out if you're going to an event or if you have a shop, and you can make your own custom displays. Someone even designed and uploaded an engraver's vise that is fully plastic besides maybe a screw. And honestly, I don't know how well it would work, but in a pinch, you might be able to get some things done with this. And it would probably cost you about $5 in parts. So to get back to the printer itself, it can do more than just the PLA that I've been printing, which is the standard 3D printer material that is the easiest and not the strongest or the best material for outdoor use or stuff like that. This printer has a proprietary nozzle system, which is also a quick change system. So you can switch it out from this nozzle to the high temp one, and this will open up all the high temp materials that you normally wouldn't be able to print. So like ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, and nylon. And with this printer being enclosed, it can keep all the heat in, and it makes your prints actually work a lot better than the open air ones, or having to figure out a way to keep your air or room hot. So one common problem that all the materials that I just listed off have is that they're kind of toxic when you're printing them. They let off particles and it's just not good to be in the same room as them or you need ventilation. Well, they kind of thought of that with this printer and put a HEPA filter in it. So after all that, what do I think of this printer and who is it for? So overall, it is a good printer. It does its job and I have no complaints with that. The only thing I wish it had was a built-in auto leveling system, like a BL Touch or something like that. And it would truly be just open the box, put filament in, and go. So when it comes to who this is for, this is not really for the more experienced people that are into 3D printing. It is more for people that are just getting into it or don't have the time to just deal with all the 3D printing things of building one from just parts and upgrading it and doing all other stuff. They just want to be able to open the box, get it set up, and go. But it honestly does have some upsides, like the fact that it's completely enclosed. You can just put it somewhere in your house and it'd be totally fine wherever it's running. Nothing's going to be able to get into it and mess with your prints. And everything is kind of all in one spot. Or if you're looking on the more production end of things, you can get these all set up and make a mass printing farm really easily and connect to each one of them via the internet and just tell each one to print whatever you're printing. But as we all know, convenience comes at a price, and that is no different for this printer. It comes in at $799, which is not very cheap, but at the same time, it takes a lot of the hassles out of learning 3D printing and just allows you to actually do it. But ultimately, this is going to be 100% up to you and your needs or wants in a printer. So if it is something that you're actually interested in, click the link in the description. It'll take you over to their info page and order page, and you'll be able to see way more than I was even able to talk about in this video, like the built-in camera, built-in filament runout sensor, along with resume print after power outages, and much more. Well, that's about it for this video. If you found it helpful whatsoever, leave a like. It actually helps out my channel a bunch. Leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.